Eye contact can also convey positive or negative feelings in a personal relationship between people. When you dislike someone, you tend to avoid eye contact and pupil size is often reduced. On the other hand, maintaining positive eye contact signals interest or attraction in a partner. Paralanguage Paralanguage relates to all aspects of the voice which are not strictly part of the verbal message. This includes the tone and pitch of the voice, the speed and volume at which a message is delivered, and pauses and hesitations between words. It is not just what you say, but how you say it. When we speak, other people read our voices in addition to listening to our words. Things they pay attention to include your timing and pace, the volume of your conversation, your tone and inflection, and the sounds that convey understanding such as ah and uh-huh. Think about how someone's tone of voice, for example, can indicate sarcasm, anger, affection or confidence. These signals can serve to reinforce the conversation. Emphasizing particular words can imply whether or not feedback is mandatory. Closeness or personal space or proxemix. Have you ever felt uncomfortable during a conversation because the other person was standing too close to you and invading your space? We all have a need for physical space, although that need differs depending on the culture, the situation and the closeness of the relationship. You can use physical space to communicate many different nonverbal messages, including signals of intimacy and affection, aggression or dominance. Every culture has preordained levels of physical proximity for different types of social relationships and individuals learn to maintain this from the time they begin the process of conscious learning within the society in which they were raised. In today's multicultural society, it is important to consider the range of nonverbal ciphers as expressed and adapted across different ethnic groups. In fact, the famous advertisement of the banking giant HSBC used examples from across the world to illustrate how colors and symbols are interpreted differently by diverse cultures. When someone violates an appropriate distance, people may feel uncomfortable or defensive. Their actions may well be open to misinterpretation. In Western society, four distances have been defined according to the relationship between the people involved in the conversation. The study of personal space is termed as proxemics, which has been divided into four categories. These four physical distances are associated with four major categories of relationships, intimate, personal, social and public. Edward D. Hall, the cultural anthropologist who coined the term in 1963, emphasized the impact of proximic behavior on interpersonal communication using this illustration. Each of these distances is divided into two phases depending on physical and emotional proximity, the close phase and the distant phase. These are further divided into eight more sections to help the reader understand the complexities of physical distances. It is worth noting that these distances are considered the norm in Western society. Intimate distance ranges from close contact, which is touching, to the far face of 15 to 45 centimeters. In British society, 
it tends to be seen as an inappropriate distance for public behavior. And, as mentioned above, entering the intimate space of another person with whom you do not have a close relationship can be extremely disturbing. Personal distance, 45 centimeters to 1.2 meters. The far phase of personal distance is considered to be the most appropriate for people holding a conversation. At this distance, it is easy to see the other person's expressions and eye movements, as well as their overall body language. A handshake is the best way to open and close a conversation within the bounds of personal distance. Social distance 1.2 meters to 3.6 meters. This is the normal distance for impersonal business, such as working together in the same room during social gatherings. Seating is also important. Communication is far more likely to be considered as a formal relationship if the interaction is carried out across a desk. In addition, if the seating arrangements are such that one person appears to look down on another, an effect of domination may be created. As a social distance, you should be audible and eye contact should be maintained Otherwise, the effect of feedback will be reduced and the interaction may end prematurely. Public distance 3.7 meters to 4.5 meters. Teachers and public speakers address groups at a public distance. Exaggerated nonverbal communication is necessary if effective communication is to occur. Since subtle facial expressions are lost at this distance, clear hand gestures are often used as a substitute. More dynamic head movements are also typical of an experienced public speaker who is aware of changes in the way body language is perceived at longer distances. Facial expressions The human face is extremely expressive able to express countless emotions without uttering a word. And unlike some forms of nonverbal communication, facial expressions are universal. The facial expressions for happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, fear and disgust are the same across cultures. Touch We communicate a great deal through touch. Think about the messages conveyed by the following. A weak handshake, a timid tap on the shoulder, a warm bear hug, a reassuring slap on the back, a patronizing pat on the head, or a controlling grip on your arm. Nonverbal messages allow people to reinforce or modify what is said in words. For example, People may nod their heads vigorously when saying yes to emphasize that they agree with the other person. But a shrug of the shoulders and a sad expression when saying I'm fine, thanks, may imply that things are not really fine at all. Convey information about their emotional state. Define or reinforce the relationship between people provide feedback to the other person, regulate the flow of communication, for example, by signaling to others that they have finished speaking or wish to add to the conversation. Many popular books on nonverbal communication present the topic as if it were a language that can be learnt. The implication being that if the meaning of every nod, eye movement, and gesture were known, the real feelings and intentions of a person would be understood. Unfortunately, interpreting nonverbal communication is not that simple. As covered in our interpersonal communication section, the way communication is influenced is by the context in which it occurs. 
For example, a nod of the head between colleagues in a committee meeting may mean something very different to when the same action is used to acknowledge someone across a crowded room. Interpersonal communication is further complicated and that it is usually not possible to interpret a gesture or expression accurately on its own. Nonverbal communication consists of a complete package of expressions, hand and eye movements, postures and gestures which should be interpreted along with speech, that is, verbal communication. How nonverbal communication can go wrong? What you communicate through your body language and nonverbal signals affects how others see you how well they like and respect you, and whether or not they trust you. Unfortunately, many people send confusing or negative nonverbal signals without even realizing it. When this happens, both connection and trust are damaged. To improve nonverbal communication, learn to manage stress. Learning how to manage stress in the heat of the moment is one of the most important things you can do to improve your nonverbal communication skills. Stress compromises your ability to communicate. When you're stressed out, you're more likely to misread other people, send confusing nonverbal signals, and lapse into unhealthy mindless reactions to statements. Furthermore, emotions are contagious. Being distressed is very likely to trigger a negative reaction, making a bad situation worse. When you are overwhelmed by stress, it's best to take some time out to calm down before you rejoin the conversation. Once you've regained your emotional equilibrium, you'll be better equipped to deal with the situation with a positive approach. How Emotional Awareness Strengthens Nonverbal Communication In order to send accurate nonverbal cues, you need to be conscious of your emotions and how they influence you. You also need to be able to recognize the emotional state of others and the thought process behind the cues they are conveying. This is where emotional awareness plays an important role. Emotional awareness enables you to judge other people's emotional state by the unspoken messages they are conveying and measure your responses accordingly. Build trust in relationships by sending non-verbal signals that are consistent with your verbal messages. Respond in ways that show others that you understand, notice and care and judge the intensity of the relationship which provides you with the choice of mending the relationship or moving on. Tips for reading body language and non-verbal communication once you have developed your ability to manage stress and diagnose emotions, you'll naturally progress to the stage where you can interpret nonverbal signals. Pay attention to inconsistencies. Nonverbal communication should reinforce what is being said. Is the person saying one thing and is their body language conveying something else? Don't read too much into a single isolated gesture or nonverbal cue. Consider all the nonverbal signals you are receiving, ranging from eye contact to the tone of voice and body language. When taken together, are their nonverbal cues consistent with their verbal message? Trust your instincts. Don't dismiss your gut feelings. If you get the sense that someone is not being honest or that something isn't adding up, 
you may be picking up on a mismatch between verbal and nonverbal cues. Evaluating nonverbal signals. Eye contact. Is eye contact being made? If so, is it overly intense or passive? Facial expression. What is their face displaying? Is it mask-like and inexpressive or full of interest? Tone of voice. Does their voice project warmth, confidence and interest? Or is it strained and blocked? Posture and gesture. Are their bodies relaxed or stiff? Are shoulders tense and raised or slightly sloped? Touch. Is there any physical contact? Is it appropriate to the situation? Does it make you feel uncomfortable? Intensity. Do they seem disinterested or overinterested and melodramatic? Timing and pace. Is there an easy flow of information back and forth? Do nonverbal responses come too quickly or too slowly? Sounds. Do you hear sounds that indicate caring or concern? As you continue to pay attention to the nonverbal cues and signals you send and receive, your ability to communicate will certainly improve.